back. And if it's your first time here, then nice to meet you. So one of the things that's coming up this fall is that my daughter will be entering fourth grade. And in fourth grade, if you're a CC family, which is a classical conversations family, you enter a program called Essentials. Essentials, I think it's like the Essentials of English Writing and Grammar or something like that. But it's just colloquially called Essentials. In this program, you go through a lot of writing terminology and grammar turns and you get into a level of grammar, English grammar understanding that I definitely never reached when I was in high school or college for that matter. So <laughs> I am a little bit intimidated by it as a lot of moms are when they're entering this. So we're doing two different things to make this transition a little bit easier for my daughter. Number one, we are previewing the program this summer. So yes, once a week, we are reading through the entire lesson out of the 24 lessons and basically pre-doing the entire curriculum before the community starts. Is that a little bit extra? Yes, it is. But it's a program that's designed to be repeated three times. So if it's repeated four times, is it going to hurt her? No, it's only going to help. So we're doing it all this summer so that it's easier when she gets into it in the fall. Now, the next thing we're doing is what this whole video is about. So let's get into it. So in doing the first four weeks of the program so far this summer as a preview for next fall, I've started to figure out what it's going to be about. And it's going to be about really just memorizing a whole bunch of different grammar terms and super understanding them and dissecting sentences to better facilitate the understanding. Fantastic. So how do I make that more fun? How do I make that something that she's going to enjoy doing at home and not just at community day with her friends? How do I get her to review and review and review this stuff in a way that's engaging and entertaining and something that she's asking to do? Well, I turn it into games because if you've been around this channel for a while, you know that we love board games. We love board games. We love card games too. So I've made several different games that although they are not from the CC curriculum. They are not the exact definitions that CC uses. I'm not infringing on their copyright or anything like that. They are going to teach the grammar terms and literary terms and get you into all of that in a very repetitive but gamified way. So let's look at some of the games in this game pack that I've made because I go kind of crazy for this sort of thing and I've made a lot of games. So the first one I want to talk about is grammar terms dominoes. If you have played dominoes before, you know that there are lots of different ways to play dominoes. So it's a very versatile game piece. In grammar terms dominoes, we have the grammar term on one side and a definition for a grammar term on the other side. It's not the right definition, it's some other terms definition. So you play different variations of dominoes games, and I think I have four in the packet um, that you can use to play with these grammar terms dominoes. And you play different games to match up the correct grammar term with the correct grammar definition. Now, are these CC definitions? No, but they're pretty close because honestly, the definition of the grammar term is pretty much the definition of the grammar term. So it'll help you understand it. And honestly, memorization is fantastic. And as a classical homeschooling parent, I love memorization, but hearing multiple definitions really helps. And we already do that because we do two different classical um, language arts programs. We do CC, but we also do Memoria Press. So we're already getting two different definitions at once. And although it's not the exact CC memorized definition, having more definitions of the same thing helps you really understand what it is more than just memorizing a song and not knowing what it means. It's the explain it to me a different way. Can you tell me it did again? Tell it to me like I'm a fifth grader. Well, this is a good way to get that and grammar terms domino, grammar terms dominoes makes it a very fun way to go over these terms. 
Okay, so I have an example over to the side here. On each page, you'll have six different, or some of them actually repeat, you'll have, I think, four actual different grammar terms and grammar definitions, and then they kind of mix themselves up a little bit on the last two pieces to give you variations so that when you play with all of them, you have a greater chance of actually finding the piece you want. Um, and there's not it's just like one piece out there that will give you the definition you're looking for. That being said, you have the term on one side and a definition on the other, and they're going to be mixed up. And then if you need it, there's a cheat sheet. Um, and there's like several cheat sheets um, that give you the term, the definition and an example. Now, these are not in alphabetical order, so it's actually a little bit harder to find the definition that you're looking for, and that is very much on purpose. We want someone to have to hunt for it so that it's not like a super quick reference and they can find it real fast. We want them to take a little bit more time and have to read other definitions and other terms to find the one they're looking for so that they get more familiarized. It's, it's, it's a trap. Okay, this is the game I'm probably the most excited about because I think it's so cool. This matches up perfectly with CC Cycle 3 if you have an essentials kit because it takes American history documents and it has you go dissect them and find the grammar terms and answer questions. Yay! It's nerdtastic. So let's get into it. So different outfit on this one, different day. Unfortunately, my software deleted this video because I've been having internet problems. So these three cards, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. I hope this works in the video. Um, this game is supposed to be a three-part card game you could as a homeschooling family um, just do this as a lesson and read the long form piece to your student and then ask them questions and then have the little answer cheat sheet section there for yourself to make sure they answer them correctly or you can print them out and lay uh print them out what is it called laminate them laminate them and cut them out and have the three little cards so that they can have the long form reading in front of them. You can have the questions and you can both kind of discuss them. And then you flip over the answer card to see what you got right. So that's kind of the idea of how these get used. There are instructions in the packet, but that's pretty much it. We also have short form versions of these, which I talk about on the next page. Thanks. Okay, I have honestly been trying to record this video all morning. It is now noon. My internet keeps crashing on me. I am going insane. But here are the rapid response cards. I've only told you this three times. You just don't get to see the other times. So the rapid response cards are a shorter version of that long form text you got on the other ones. There's like nine of the long form ones and eight of the rapid response cards. I think that's right. It's either that or it's the opposite way. These ones I envision as more of a purse game. So what do I mean by purse game? Well, you print them out, you laminate them, you cut them all apart, and then you hole punch each card to make them into little sets and you put them on a binder ring. Why do you do that? So that you can throw them in your purse. When the kids were younger, I did this with like the CC memory work when it was brand new to them for the first time the kids when my one kid was younger i haven't even started cc with my sons i have two sons <laughs> they don't do this yet they're three and three months so this way you can just like have it easy access and you can go through them like in the car or on a walk or at the park that sort of thing the other way to do it is to once again print them out, laminate them, cut them apart. But instead of hole punching them, you just keep them in a little game box. Um, I use those little photo boxes they have at Target. 
um, in the dollar spots. I think they might also have them at Dollar Tree now, but I use those little photo boxes because they're perfect for game boxes. Um, you would put them in there and then you would just play it like a regular game, but these ones would go faster because instead of reading through the whole half page text, you're reading through like one sentence at a time, but you're also diving deeper into that one sentence. So it's not easier in that you are diving deeper into it, but it's just different. You're getting a different level out of it. So here are some examples of what those cards might look like. Um, so yeah, there's that. And I'm sorry if I missed something from having already told this to you three times and my internet keeps crashing. All right, thanks and I'll see you in the next one. Now this game is very, very cool, but it probably deserves a video all to itself. It's that neat. This is a board game that does two things. It teaches you about the entire writing process from start to finish, and it also reinforces grammar terms through that. You would think I would put literary terms with this, but no, I chose grammar terms. I think I can probably redo it and also have literary terms or do a separate one with literary terms and this one with grammar terms, but I digress. This one, you start as a budding writer and you're beginning your creative process. And then at landmarks, you pull landmark cards and it tells you the story of you going through the writing process. So at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, you get to pull out these landmark cards and they're the ones over here with the larger block of text and you read them and it tells you about the writing process. Along the way, you're playing a board game where your cards that you pull out or that your partner pulls out for you are going to give you um, the grammar term and then you have to come up with the definition or they can give you the definition and you have to come up with the grammar term whichever way you want to go. There are of course always different variations on how you can play these games to make it more fun. I am a big believer in house rules when it comes to board games because if you own a board game for more than like a year or two, you probably want to play a different version of it or add in your own homespun rules to make it more fun. Also, I really like the game markers on these ones, the little game pieces, because they're different ways to write. And I think that's really interesting. So you have a pencil, a quill, a pen, so very traditional handwriting. And then you have the typewriter, the keyboard, and the microphone because I do want to acknowledge that there are learners out there who are going to do a lot of their writing voice to text rather than typing things out or even writing them by hand. Dysgraphia is a like growing problem. Um, it seems like I hear about it more and more often because people just don't write on a regular basis and speech to text is a really common thing now. So I want to acknowledge that and welcome that in because a lot of our learners are probably doing that. All right, thanks and I'll see you on the next one. Let me know if you want like a full video on this because this really could be a full video. It's a really cool thing. And I think it would go well with um, any creative writing program that you're doing. So let me, let me know if you wanna know more about this. Drop something in the comments. Okay, this one is literary terms that boggle the mind. It is a boggle style game where you have these um, grids of letters and you have to come up with literary terms that you can spell out of these letters. So you're both reinforcing what the literary terms are and working on spelling, win-win. So I have two different boards as examples here on the board that the child is filling out. You just have lines where it shows you, you know, this is where you fill things in. Each board should be able to come up with nine different, or sorry, not nine, 12 different literary terms with the letters on the boggle sheet or grid sheet or whatever you want to call it. Then on the answer key, it has the 12 ones you have on the one that you're filling out, it has the instructions for how to do it. So pretty straightforward. Um, got a couple different variations of that. I think I have like four or five different games that you can play on that one. Um, 
So yeah, that one's a lot of fun. So the last game I want to talk about in this whole big packet of games, and it is by far not the last game in this packet of games, but the last one is a like puzzle game. So I've seen these all over the place where it's like these strip puzzles. So you have like four of them on a page and I would suggest only bringing out four of them at a time. And you have three different parts to a strip and you know that this one's going to be, you know, this part and this one's going to be this part and this one's going to be the middle part because of their shape. So you know what's going to go together, but you don't know what it's going to go together with. So you have to match up in this game, the grammar term, the definition and an example. So you play with like, you know, four different or you want to go crazy, eight different at a time and you match up what goes together. So they have to read a little bit. It's a game they can play independently. And I know at this age, a lot of moms are working on independence. Okay, kiddo, let's see if you can work independently for an hour. That would be great. I need to work with the littles. Or, you know, that might just be me. It's possible that's just me. But anyways, here's yet another one. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these are working on the exact same grammar terms over and over and over and over again, just in different ways. Because I'm a classical mom and I know the power of repetition. So working on these same things in different ways really helps solidify, or at least I'm hoping because I'm honest and I haven't played any of these yet. Well, I've played some of them actually, but I haven't played them in, like. I just made them. So like I haven't played them over and over and over again with the kids. Kid. This only applies to one of my kids. So that is a grand overview of, I don't know, what did I go over? Like five different games that we have in this pack. I'll link it down below. You can buy them individually. You can buy them as a game pack. Um, you can check out the other cool things on my store. Memorial Day is coming up. I have a Memorial Day packet. Shavuot is coming up. I have a Shavuot packet. Basically, when I came home for maternity leave with my son, I started making curriculum and games and packets and things um, as like something to do at home because... I needed another thing with a brand new baby. I don't know. I just work a lot. So I made these. Would you like them? They're fun. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them. All right. If you've made it this long in the video and you haven't liked and subscribed, um, I don't know what's wrong with you because you obviously like this and you've been watching for whew, a while. So <laughs> do the things. Thanks and see you on the next one. Um, it probably will be less salesy on the next video because why do I need to be salesy all the time? I just have done a whole bunch of these and I figured I should at least tell you what I'm doing because that's what we do here. We share what we're doing. So, all right. Thanks. Bye.